Proceedings podcast. I'm Bill Hamlet, the Editor-in-Chief of Proceedings at the U.S. Naval Institute. This is day two of West, and I'm here with uh, my, my guest today is Vice Admiral Bill Galinas. He is the Commander of Naval Sea Systems Command, so he oversees the buying and the maintenance and the sustainment of the ships in the U.S. Navy. Big job. Tremendous team. And uh, Admiral, you just came off a panel discussion, which was terrific, I thought. Uh, the, the title of that was, What is the Acquisition Community Doing to Deliver Warfighting Capability the Fleet Needs at Speed, at Scale, uh, and at a Cost We Can Afford? That was a, right. a good conversation with your counterparts, NAVAIR, also the Coast Guard Acquisition Commander, the Marine Corps Acquisition Commander, uh, and you had NAVWAR, uh, Admiral sure. Doug Small, yeah. talking about uh, naval you know, systems and systems integration. Sure. So it was a great conversation. Yeah. Um, you wanted to talk about three things, readiness, sustainment, and workforce. Uh, so let's start with readiness. You know, a lot, lot of, there's been a lot of news in the last you know, couple of years about um, maintaining the, the ships that we have, building the future fleet that the Navy needs, but right. also maintaining what we currently have. So what's happening in, uh, in NAVC to, to yeah. maintain or build readiness? Yeah, so Bill, first off, again, thanks for having me here this afternoon. and. Um, you know, thanks to the Naval Institute and FCA for putting this on. What a, what a great event. And just, uh, you know, the energy here is, is incredible. So really, uh, really awesome. And thanks to you and your team. So, you know, on the, on the readiness piece, uh, let me just talk a little bit about kind of war fighting readiness, okay, from that perspective. And, um, you know, it's something, you know, if you're an operator, you know, in the, in the fleet, um, you know, that's kind of your day job is, is war fighting readiness. You're, you're training for that. You're thinking about that. Um, you know, in the systems commands, well, our focus is really probably more on the force generation piece in terms of capability, uh, the design, the construction, the sustainment of that capability. Um, I see us as also having a very significant role in the war fighting readiness piece of that. And so as an organization, how are we getting ready should you know, things escalate uh, and, and you know, we need to go further in that, that area? Um, we have recently, last fall, uh, stood up a warfighting readiness director with inside of NAVC, um, led by uh, uh, a reserve rear admiral who has come on board, Bob Dotson, just doing a phenomenal job. A small team, uh, but already making a difference. And, and when I think about warfighting readiness for the Naval Sea Systems Command, um, <clears throat> it's everything from how we would handle a, um, a, a current day-to-day -day fleet casualty, which we are... Uh, uh, well experienced at and and uh, you know we we know how to do that on a kind of a, a one of event um, but what if we had a series of those in it like in a work time scenario okay how would we as an organization respond and that's from that's from headquarters um, you know down to our field activities to include our warfare centers our naval shipyards regional maintenance centers private industry um, you know we, we have a tremendous amount of capability to bring to bear to those those type of problems. So, um, you know, and it's, so war fighting readiness, it, it's more than just battle damage assessment, battle damage repair on a, on a platform, a ship or a submarine, although that's absolutely a key part of that. So how would we get after that? And, you know, um, think back to the tragic collisions of 2017, the two ships, okay, uh, the Bonham Richard fire that we had uh, a few years back or, you know, the Connecticut incident, right? <clears throat> we. We at NAVC, I feel, are, are well positioned to respond to those type of casualties. And that's the one-offs. Those are the one-offs. But, you know, if we, how would we stand up a watch floor, for example, for an extended period of time with technical expertise and, you know, engineers and ship maintainers and repairers to, to be able to provide that, that continuity for the fleet should they need that capability? Uh, within our warfare centers, we do a lot of work. I mean, a lot of work with the fleet commanders, the type commanders, on doctrine and um, operational scenarios, right? And so um, there's a lot of capability that our warfare centers could bring that, you know, if engaged in a, in a high-end fight and as, you know, we observe things and, and learn things, think about the situation in Ukraine today, right? How do we rapidly take those lessons learned and transform those back into, you know, doctrine or operational concepts that we could feed back to the fleet. Our warfare centers know how to do that, okay? Um, Contracting-wise, how do we rapidly mobilize, you know, the, in, the might of industry uh, if we need to do that, whether it's in ship repair or even the, to quickly develop a new capability, right? How do we quickly get those contracts in place? 
um, we want to be thinking about today. We don't want, you know, the first time we run the play to be on game day, right? And so um, that's what the team is working on. Another significant area is is uh, our cyber response capability. And again, mm -hmm. you know, working with the Information Warfare Command or 10th Fleet or Cybercom um, or, or a number of other organizations across the Navy, um, we have tremendous capability with the inside the Naval Sea Systems Command, again, reaching back into our warfare centers, you know, to bring some some pretty significant expertise, you know, to that part of the war fight should it come to that. Uh, how do you feel about capacity, both in the public and the private shipyards, you know, getting after readiness, the, the shipyards are key to that, right? Yeah. And so, uh, you know, you talked about war, wartime repair and, and uh, getting ships back into the fight if it comes to that. Yeah. Um, yeah, how, how are you feeling about Yeah, thanks for that question. That, that's a great question, Bill. And it kind of really brings to probably the second area I'd like to talk a little bit, which is probably one of our biggest challenge areas right now is on the fleet sustainment piece. And this is both, uh, you know, for our surface forces as well as uh, the work that we do in our, our public shipyards with the submarines and the aircraft carriers. And, uh, you know, so I would tell you, um, again, just a, a tremendous team in that space, uh, both on industry uh, working with our, our, our surface ships um, and the work that's being done within our C-21, um, our regional maintenance commands, um, and what, what, those, what those folks are doing, but then inside our public shipyards. And, uh, you know, frankly, uh, we're just, we're not meeting the mark today. Okay, we're seeing uh, on-time delivery rates uh, in the 40% range. Uh, which absolutely does not mean that, that's for maintenance availability. That's, that's for maintenance so ships go back into a, so, a so shipyard. So the on-time delivery, you know, to uh, to deliver a ship on the committed date, the commitment that we make to the fleet commander um, at the start of that availability, we're averaging about forty percent or so, which clearly does not meet the the TICOM or the fleet requirements. Okay, and um, you know, you talked about capacity. Um, I, I think inside in the public sector space. Um, we do need more capacity, okay? Um, and there's a number of ways that we can get after that, you know, building that inside the shipyard. So that's getting better at meeting our commitments, okay? Starting work on time, finishing work on time, getting the planning right up front. That's really where, you know, this, this, this war, if you will, in the sustainment world is won or lost, is the plan that you put up front, understanding the material condition of the ship or the submarine before it comes into the yard. We're, we're still seeing too much unplanned work on vessels that, that come into our shipyards. Two things I heard from other speakers or panelists mm -hmm. uh, yesterday and today about that, about you know getting ships out of the yards or getting ships built on time or getting them repaired on time. And uh, Admiral Chebby, who is your Nav yes. Air Systems Command counterpart, yes. Uh, he was talking about, you know, he, he always puts it in terms of a North Star about, you know, Super Hornet readiness and how they set not just a, a goal to improve readiness a couple of years back, but to reach 341 mission capable Super Hornets, right? So they set a number goal. So when you think about 40% on time delivery out of shipyards isn't good enough, what kind of goals are you setting for your team to, to get, you know, yeah. Get it better, right? Yeah. So what I would tell you, you know, um, you know, we we have a number of, of seventy-five fully mission-capable ships on the surface side. Uh, there's there's a similar effort on the submarine side as well. Um, what I would tell you right now is I know that, and I'm just going to talk submarines. We have too many submarines in maintenance today as we speak. Um, so we have to we have to, uh, you know, get those ships through their maintenance availabilities, the modernization availabilities. And again, you know, if you think about kind of the what I call the three big rocks in this area or the planning element, the material procurement, and then the waterfront execution, that, that's really, that's where the majority of our focus is. The second, if you kind of take a little bit of a step back, some of the foundational efforts, some of the foundational work that we need to do, um, you know, how do we rebuild, how do we regrow the workforce? And, you know, coming, I won't even say coming out, you know, as we, as we work through the current COVID pandemic, and I think we really, you know, as a, as a country, really as a, across the world, have learned how to better work within the, the COVID environment. Um, how do we start to, again, rebuild the leadership and the, and the skill sets, the talents that we need inside the shipyard? So those are things that we're working on to get after that problem. So I, I think I heard you speak at uh, the Submarine League event back in uh, yes. in November, sure. uh, and I've mentioned this to our, our audience uh, in the past, that there was 
uh, to, to me at the time, a surprising focus at the Submarine League event in November on industrial capacity, right? Yes. And on the, you know, can we get to two plus one submarines in terms of new build? But then also there was a big discussion about shipyard capacity yeah. and just what you said, you know, too many submarines are currently in maintenance and not available to the fleet yeah. commanders. Uh, and, and part of that conversation, and it's been echoed here at West, was a conversation about skilled workers, about welders, about electricians, about technicians, um, you know, the it systems integrators, the shipyard workers, et cetera. Um, how, I, I'm constantly curious, what is the Navy doing to perhaps work with, you know, Department of Education or Department of Labor? Is there is there something outside yeah. the Department of the Navy that can help with that? Yeah. You know, big government wise. There, there are a lot of programs out there. I would tell you, I, I feel like we need to be better and, and maybe more aggressive at going after those. You know, just with inside the NAVC enterprise. And thanks for coming back to the capacity piece. Um, and let me just talk about the workforce for a second because I, I do believe that. You know, strategically, that is probably our, our, one of our biggest challenges, okay? It's our ability to, you know, recruit, train, and retain a technically talented workforce um, across the entire enterprise. And that, and that includes, you know, our, our business units across, uh, you know, headquarters and our field activities. So that's finance, that's contracting, uh, that's our HR teams, okay? Um, everything that those folks do to, to kind of you know, provide the, the, the fuel for the fire, if you will, in terms of shipbuilding and ship repair. Um, and then you get into the technical side, right? So um, there's our engineers, you know, uh, you know, inside our headquarters and some of our field activities that do, you know, some of the heavy design work for future submarines and ships. Um, and, and then on the sustainment side, same thing as we design, you know, the modernization programs and systems to keep our ships combat relevant, right? Um, and then you get inside some of our field activities. So you know, at the regional maintenance centers, um, the uh, the folks that manage um, ship repair and, and maintenance and modernization availabilities, um, and then go inside of our four public shipyards to the trades and, and the skilled uh, craftsmen that we have. So, you know, welders and pipe fitters and electricians and just the, you know, literally hundreds of, of, of trades and skill sets that you need to take a nuclear submarine or nuclear carrier through, through the shipyard. So, those are areas that we're we're working on to to, to uh, you know improve our our hiring uh, efforts, sharing lessons learned, uh, making use of all of the authorities that we have, uh, leveraging DoD and Do Department of Navy efforts to to kind of get after that, and then to your point, you know, reaching outside of the Department of Defense, right? What other programs are out there, right? Partnering with. Uh, with public schools, all of our shipyards have partnerships with local community colleges. Okay, within their their communities, um, the uh, through the, the team submarine uh, organization, the work that they're doing to, to kind of help rebuild the submarine industrial base, which then really spills over into other parts of our, our enterprise. So, a lot of good work going on in that area, but I think it's something that really uh, needs our, our focus and uh, and continued efforts. How many people are in your enterprise within the NAVC enterprise? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's a big team. Uh, probably about eighty-seven thousand people across the the organization, and that includes uh, you know the headquarters team uh, in the Washington Navy Yard in, in, in Washington D.C., regional maintenance centers uh, across the, all of our fleet concentration areas, and literally around the world, uh, warfare centers, and then our, certainly our public shipyards and our supervisors of shipbuilding. 87,000 people. Yes, sir. That's a large Good workforce. Team. Yeah. Good team. And, and what, Good I'm, team. what I'm hearing is you're hiring. Yeah. Uh, we are hiring, and I got to tell you, I am, I, uh, I'm, I'm high on the NAVC team right now. We have got some tremendous talent out there, and uh, you know, just very grateful to uh, to be able to come to work every day and lead that organization and um, what they do for our Navy and our country. So thank you. So the speakers at West and you know <clears throat> any one of these trade shows, speakers and panels, all we always address problems we we've, we've got to you know come together and talk about problems yeah. and then you know figure out how to solve those problems but uh, you know last question for you is you know what excites you what what's going well at NAVC what what programs perhaps would you say hey this is going really well we're very excited about this capability that we're delivering to the fleet right now yeah you know I just look at um, you know the, the ships that are coming out of our shipyards um, you know, the, the, the quality is high, right? So, you know, we just recently took a ship out of Bath Ironworks uh, 
uh, right before Christmas, you know, and just really knocked it out of the park with insert. Okay, you look at what the team is doing on the Gerald Ford. Okay, um, you know, when we finished that ship, there was still some work to do uh, with some of the systems on board. The team really got after it over the last couple of years. Very successful shock trial last year. Really good, you know, first operational uh, employment last fall. And, uh, you know, Ford's going to be ready to join the fleet here, uh, you know, later this year. And I think she's just going to do some, some, some really good things. You know, uh, is, uh, is, is Kennedy and Enterprise and Dory Miller, will they come on and into the fleet faster because of lessons learned? There's a learned? lot of lessons learned. We're already seeing a decrease in the number of man hours to complete certain elements of that, uh, the, the, the construction efforts of those ships. Yep. You know, clearly they're not complete yet, but, um, you know, we, we are seeing some good learning ship to ship, and uh, and we look forward to, to continuing that. So, yeah. All right, sir. Thank you very okay. much. My, my guest has been Vice Admiral Bill Galinas. He's Commander of Naval Sea Systems Command. I hear that he's hiring. He's got a workforce of 87,000 people. Sir, thanks for what you do for the Navy, and, and thanks for being here at West. Thank you, Bill. Thanks very much. All right, okay. take care. Good. Thank you.